So this is this is our footnote piece of paper or our like. This is the gory detail paper, yeah. Yeah. So let's let's move this one so it doesn't go through onto. Oh well, it, yeah. It, it, will, it will bleed through. So okay. I'll give you this one back in a minute. Fine. All right. I'm going to set something on up on here so that we can refer to it quickly. I'm just typing in the equations that we just wrote down. Yeah. yeah so those two, uh, those are the two different parameters. I don't really care about them all. I want to plot them over time. So let's make a slider t which goes between zero and two pi. And that's the parameter I was talking about. And let's make a point which is f of t and g of t. And there's that point. I'm just checking that this is the shape we were after. Can you see it moving around in a certain way? And let's trace it. A bit of live exploration and kind of confirming. Look at this lovely bump, uh, nephroid shape. There we go. So um, those are the equations we just talked about. I'm just yeah. confirming they do trace the shape that we were after. Okay, so we're going to find out the tangents to this curve with some serious mathematics. Okay, starting point, just as a reminder, here's my plan. I want to know about the tangents to this shape, uh, which is to do with the gradient of the curve at any point. I hope your viewers will recognize that dy by dx is code for the gradient of a curve. Now, since this is done parametrically, I need to differentiate the x-coordinate with respect to time and the y-coordinate with respect to time, and I would get dy by dt if I did that. But I can divide that by dx dt, and that would give me, by something called the chain rule, the gradient of the curve. Technical detail, if that's unfamiliar, you can believe it, or you can go and learn some math. But I'm going to do the derivatives. I'm going to do this quite quickly. So I need to do dy by dt, differentiate this with respect to t. That's going to become 3 cosine t plus 3 cosine 3t. That's on top. I've got to divide that by a derivative of this. That's going to become negative 3 sine t. Uh, there's a bunch of 3s. I can cancel. There's a factor of 3 and everything there. I'm going to take the negative sign out. And this is cosine t plus cosine 3t over sine t plus sine 3t. And Hang on. So that stayed positive when you took the negative? Yeah, the negative sign was in the bottom here. Oh, okay. uh, and I took it out of the bottom just to sort of make bas basically make these look cleaner. Yep. Uh, so the reason this is useful is that I can just about tell with some trig identities. In fact, well, let's, let's, let's cover our bases. There's a fact that cosine of A plus cosine of B can always be rewritten as uh, twice the cosine of A plus B over 2 times cosine of a minus b over 2. And this is a useful fact when you've got two waves added together, you can turn them into a multiplication thing. That's kind of like my little aside. You can kind of see that the top layer is a bit like that, so I can replace it. So this will become uh, cosine 2t, that's the 3t take away the t, uh, times a cosine of a single uh, of 4t over 2. And two, and there's a two. And if something similar happens to the sine, there's another similar identity for sine, which turns this into let me keep the minus two sine four t over two and a cosine of two t over two. And I'm already seeing some nice things. I've got a cosine of t, that's two over two, two over two. Those things cancel. Can yeah. I get a new yeah. pen, Brady? Good to go. Yes. Never had a pen change. Pen much. change, yeah, too much maths, Brady. Yeah. Right. A uh, bunch of stuff cancelled. I should check that actually I'm dividing by cosine to cancel this out. I should check that that's not zero. That would be, it's fine. You can go and check whether you agree. Well, that's fine. I end up with the twos cancelling as well. I've got negative cos of 2t over sine of 2. This is, yeah, I'll just leave it as that. Cos of 2t over sine of 2. This is the gradient of the nephroid at any point t. T is the parameter, you pick a value of T, you'll be at some point in the curve, and that is the gradient of it. Okay, now we're ready to find the equation of a line with that gradient. Uh, those in the UK at A level might have learned an equation of a straight line. I'm sure the rest of the world has got their own version of it. I'm going to use what would be common in a UK school about age 17, which is the idea of doing Y minus some Y coordinate equals gradient times X minus the X coordinate. And I've got all the bits I need. The y coordinate is up here. It's a mess, but it's up there. 3 sine t, put the minus in sine 3t. The gradient is here, negative cos 2t over sine 2t, and this is the x coordinate. I haven't left myself a lot of space. And now we have some trick to tidy up. My goal is to get an equation of a straight line, and I can see I've got y's and x's and just a bunch of parameters, so it's kind of there. I just want to make it recognizable. So. And multiply everything by sine 2t, I'm going to get y times sine 2t. 
minus 3 sine t sine 2t minus sine 3t sine 2t equals multiply out this bracket would be negative x times cosine 2t uh, this one is going to be 3 cosine t cosine 2t and again I get a plus of cosine 3t cosine 2t this is that's horrible. I, this is not. This is the grunt work of mathematics. This is where you do your sort of sprint training to get this automatic, but it's still painful. I'm going to get the y and the x term on the left hand side. So y sine two t plus x cos two t. That feels has some symmetry about it. Everything else is going to go over here. The ones with threes in the front are sine t sine two t plus. And anyone who's done some A level trigonometry should be shouting at the screen about that format, more on that in a moment, plus the ones with the ones, and there's a coefficient of one, so this is cosine three t, cosine two t, plus sine three t, sine two t. Okay, and the reason this is good is there's another fact about cosine, cosine of two angles added together is the same as cosine of a, cosine of b, with a negative sign in there, this ends up having a positive sign here. That fact is like this bread and butter part of an A-level maths uh, experience. And it's so rare to realize why it's important, but here in the wild, I found these expressions which look like this side. So these pairs look like that, which means I can go straight to this. And that's good because then the right-hand side becomes three times, well, apparently I've got to subtract the two. I've got one T and two T. So two T take one T is just a T. This is three cos t. And this, subtract the two, 3t and 2t, it's just another t. It's cos t, so altogether this is 4 cosine t. And here is my unhelpful looking final result, but it's at least simpler than the mess I started with. That is an equation of a straight line. I've got a y variable and x variable, so anyone who's more used to seeing straight lines is y equals something. I could make it y equals something. Uh, but that's about as simple as I might expect the format. And what I'm claiming is that that is the equation of a straight line which is going to be a tangent to the nephroid. And you change the value of t, it will be a different tangent. Okay. Am I actually, I'm actually sweating. <laughs> of a straight line which is tangent to a nephroid at any point, and that point is defined by the value of t in the parameter. Glad you all watched me derive that. If you did it yourself, well done. Yeah, if you didn't watch it or do it yourself, but the headline is this, so I'm going to write that down on our other piece of paper. Don't need that anymore. Get rid of it, don't need Let that. me get this right. The tangent equation is y sine 2t plus x cos 2t equals 4 cos t. And it is worth checking what that means.